Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fill out the updated form W4 for 2021. This is a super important form to fill out accurately as it tells your employer how much taxes to withhold from your paychecks. Now, if you're not withholding enough from your paychecks, at the end of the year, you're gonna get a big tax bill and potentially have to pay penalties to the IRS. And vice versa, if you withhold too much taxes out of your paychecks, then your paycheck's gonna be low. You're not gonna have that much money throughout the year. However, at the end of the year, you're just gonna get a big refund. So again, super important form to uh, fill out accurately. Stay tuned and we'll go through line by line on how to fill this thing out. All right, here's that lovely form W-4. So let's get into it here. Step one to fill this out, you're just gonna enter in the basics. As you see, I already kinda threw those in first first name, middle initial, last name, social, and your address. Pretty easy there. This might be a little more difficult. Your filing status. So single, married, or married filing separate. Qualifying widower, that's if your spouse passed and you have a dependent, you can use that for the next two years after the passing of your spouse. Head of household, this one's always confusion that I get. Just because you pay for everything in the house doesn't mean you're the head of household. In order for you to claim head of household with the IRS or to qualify for the head of household, you have to have a qualifying individual. So what is that? Um, it's basically your kid. So nonetheless, this is a discussion for another day, but you would want to look up if you actually claim or you can claim the head of household. It's not just because you're the one making money in the house that you claim head of household. If you're married, you do not check this box. Okay. See, check only if you're unmarried, it even says it right there. So if you're married, you only check in either of these two. Okay. So there goes that. Uh, our examples today, we're going to go through, you know, if we are married. Okay. But nonetheless, it would just be a different check the box if you're single or married filing separate or head of household. Okay. Here we go. Step two. This is probably the most complicated step on this form here. Step two and complete steps two to four only if they apply to you. Otherwise skip to step five. That means just sign this thing if these don't apply, but we're going to go through each one of these here. And if you are exempt from withholding, which nine, 99% of the times people are not exempt from withholding, I never recommend doing this. Uh, but if you are, you would, it says go to the instructions and in the instructions, it's just going to say write exempt on the space above step four C. So like down here, okay, you would just, just type it out. Um, but we were not gonna do that. Uh, and when to use the estimator online. So this estimator, I will actually go through in a separate video. This is basically like doing a whole tax return online. So this is its own ball of wax. It takes some time to go through this. Uh, so that will be a separate video. I'll actually go through that though. All right, on to step two, here we go. Sorry about that. Complete this step if you hold one or more jobs at a time. So that's if you have two jobs at the same time, or if you're married filing jointly and your spouse also works. So it's basically complete this step if there are two jobs held at the same time for your household. The correct amount of withholding depends on the income earned from all these jobs. So here we go, do one of the following. Use the estimator online, you'll see, if you actually just click that, it just opened up a, a window here, right? Tax withholding estimator, the IRS. Again, this will be a separate video. I'll go through this. But you're going to see here, this is for the most accurate withholding. And you're like, wait, what? So I have to do this? for Yes, unfortunately, that's what we have to do. But again, separate video. Or we do B, use the multiple jobs worksheet on page three for a roughly accurate withholding. I know, kind of confusing here. This is weird. Why would they give us a roughly accurate? I guess this is what we get here. Unfortunately, it's not much we get to decide on. Um, or we can go through C, and this is the easiest one. If there are only two jobs total, you may check this box. Do the same with the other W-4 for the other job. This option is accurate for jobs with similar pay. 
Otherwise, more tax than necessary may be withheld. So if if you have two jobs, they're both making like 20K, then you would check this box on both jobs W-4. Okay, or the same goes if you know you and your spouse both make kind of the similar pay. Same thing, you would just check this box and move on to the next step. But since that's way too easy, what we're gonna do is go through this little B here. Use the multiple jobs on three. Enter the, the results on step four C. So we'll go to page three, like it says, multiple jobs worksheets. If you choose this step, complete the worksheets on only one of the form W-4. So we'll go through this again, but basically you're only gonna do this on, so if we have, again, two jobs here or three, you're only gonna do this W-4, this part on one of the W-4s, not all three or the two that you have, okay? And you're gonna do it for the highest paying job is what you would fill this out for. The two lower paying jobs you would not do this for. If you have more than one job with annual wages of more than 120, or more than three jobs, see publication 505 for additional tables, or you can use the online withholding estimator again, separate video, but this is what we would use. The pub 505 would be confusing to go through. All right, so let's get to it. So if we have two jobs, we would fill out this step here. Sorry about that, just thinking about what I'm saying next, I apologize. If you have two jobs and you're married filing jointly or you and your spouse each have one job, find the amount from the appropriate table on page four using the higher paying job and the lower paying job. So what we're gonna do is let's say you make 60,000 60, and your spouse makes 40,000. Or let's say you have two jobs at the same time, one makes 60, the other makes a 40. What we're gonna do, do is go to page four here and there we go, lovely tables here. So we're married filing jointly. The higher paying job is over here. It makes 60, okay? And then the lower paying job makes 40. So now we see where these two line up here. Uh, 40 is right here, 60 is right there. So 44, 90. We're gonna put that amount right here. Okay, so if we only have two jobs, we're gonna skip this three, right? It even says right there to line three. Enter the number of pay periods for the highest paying job. For example, if that job pays weekly, enter 52. If it pays every other week, enter 26. So most are like bi-weekly for jobs. So we'll put the 26. Um, and then it's just gonna tell us to divide line one by two C. So that's what we'll do. 490 divided by 26. One seven, we'll round up here, 173. And then we're gonna enter this amount on step 4C above. So we'll go here, we'll go 4C at 173. So for this example, we would be done here with step two, okay? We would move on then to step three. But what I'm also gonna do is, hey, what if we have three jobs? Okay, so we're gonna erase this because we no longer have the two. We're gonna do the three jobs. If you or your spouse have three jobs at the same time, complete lines A, B, C below. Find the amount, appropriate table, page four, using the annual wages of the highest paying job in the higher paying job row and the annual wages of the next highest paying job in the lower paying. So let's say for instance here, we have one job that pays 60, one job pays 20 and the other job pays 20. So we have three jobs, okay, between either just you or you and your spouse. And so we'll do this. So we have the highest, which is 60, and the next highest is 20. Let's do it. Married filing jointly, 60, and then 20. So 30, 80 is what we would put here. 30, 80. Add the annual wages of the two highest paying jobs. So that would be 60 and 20. We got 80. And use that total as wages in the higher paying job. And you, so that would be 80 over there. And use the annual wages for the third job in the lower paying column. So it'd be 80 and 20. Let's take a look. 80 and 20, 50, 10. All right, add those two up together. Let's do that, 30, 80 plus 50, 10. 
0.90. Enter the number of pay periods, we'll say, for the highest paying job. Okay, again, you're only filling this out for the highest paying job. You wouldn't fill it out for the other two jobs. 26, let's do bi-weekly, we'll do 26 here. And then, then we're gonna divide, it's gonna say line 2C by the number of pay periods. Okay, and then we would add that, then, I'm sorry, then we would put that number 311 into 4C here. You see the difference, right? Same exact figures in terms of total income. The total income would be 100,000 if we had the two jobs or the three jobs, but it's just the way it's split up, right? The 60, 20, 20, or the 60 and the 40 of how these jobs are split up, it's gonna change the extra withholdings. So obviously if we have the three jobs, it's gonna tell us to pay more. But in the end, on the tax return, it's gonna look at the same, but you're just gonna be paying more throughout the year. So that's why, this is saying here that this is a roughly accurate uh, withholding because these tables are not 100% accurate here, as you just saw. All right, well, let's continue. So we just completed step two here. Let's go into step three. This one's pretty easy. If your total income will be 200 or less or 400 or less if you're married filing jointly, you're going to fill out the following here. If it's more, obviously, you don't fill this out. And again, you're only doing this all this section here for the highest paying job, okay? Only once, you don't wanna do this on two jobs. Multiply the number of qualifying children under the age of 17 by two. Let's say we have two kids under 17. We have no other dependents. So we'll put zero there and we add those two together here, okay? All right, step four, other income, not from jobs. If you want tax withheld from other income you expect this year that don't have withholdings, that includes interest, dividends, retirement income, um, then you would put that amount here. So let's say we have about 1,500 in some dividends that we're gonna get from some stocks we own. Okay, we'll put that there. It's pretty straightforward, but I would look at it like a prior return to kind of get an estimate there. In terms of deductions, if you expect to claim deductions other than the standard deductions and wanna reduce your withholdings, use the deduction worksheets on page three. So. What the standard deduction is is generally for people that don't own a home that are not paying mortgage interest. So most people claim the standard deduction and would not fill this form out. But if you are going to itemize your de deductions, you're paying that mortgage interest, then you would fill this out. And we go here. Deductions worksheet, right? Enter the estimate of 2021 itemized deductions. You're like, okay, I don't know what that is. What I would recommend to do if your estimate is I would go to your 2020 tax return here and just use the number here because this should, year over year, these kind of don't really change too much. They do change, but again, this is an estimate, okay? So I would go to line 12 on your 2020 tax return and use that amount here on line one. So let's say that said 30,000 bucks. We're then gonna enter in married filing jointly, the standard deduction for 2021, 25,000. And then line three is gonna tell us enter, if line one is greater than two, in our case, subtract two from one. So we'll do 3,000 minus 25, 100, 4,900 bucks. Enter the estimate of student loans, interest, deductible IRA contributions, certain other adjustments. So this would be right from schedule one. What I would do is look at your, if you have any of these adjustments on your 2020 return, I would use the same for this here. Again, this is an estimate. So go to your schedule one 2020, the adjustments line 22 is the total of these adjustments and put that number in here. We'll say we don't have any, add lines three and four together. So that would be the 4,900 and enter that on step four B. So we'll put that right here. There it is, there's the W-4, we filled it out, we're done. Okay, so this is ready, you sign it, send it off to your employer. Um, now, next question is, what is this gonna do to my paycheck once I make these changes? Got a great website that uh, you can use to kind of enter this information into and see what it'll do before you actually give it to your employer, okay? 
I'll include a link in the description to this, but Paycheck City here is a free estimator online for paychecks and see what this withholding does. But make sure when you come here that you're gonna check this box. Use the 2020 W-4, okay? Because it defaults to using the older W-4. So we would check this box and then you'll fill this amount in, okay? And then it'll and then once you hit calculate here, it'll give you an actual amount of what your take-home pay will be. If you want a more accurate one, you're gonna click, click your state and put the state information in here too, okay? Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. As usual, like, share, subscribe to the channel and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much.